well saying we're at the last DVD now, folks, because we're definitely starting to run out of coffee. And I'd say if I had the third one in a row here now, we could be getting the shakes. I've kind of went through all of our DVDs. Really, the only one we've left to talk about is, is our latest release. And I've tried to explain to everybody, really and truly from, I suppose, from both my heart and my and my head as to the different thinking and things that were going on. And, and some of the hard lessons we learned, some of the wonderful lessons we learned and all of the products are part of building and growing the brand but I suppose now I want to talk a little bit before I get into the DVD about other things that was going on in the background and what I mean about that is DVDs. You know, DVDs are a, a market that in the modern world, in the city life world, we understand, we know people work to me don't even have DVD players. <laughs> Agriculture is a little bit different. Rural Ireland, rural UK has some horrendous um, internet speeds and stuff. So we've been offering digital downloads of our movies or our DVD style products. And we understand that people's view and preferences change. And, you know, you're in an ever present social media world and you have your keyboard warriors and you have everything that you have to deal with and, and attend to. And what I'm saying is basically life changes and moves along and in my head it's always going to be a DVD because it is the it's the foundation that built the business but being grass man the next DVD that we made stroke film stroke digital download whatever you we want to call it in today's world is probably my second favorite of them all the favorite is always the first one it's, it's the one that told me we could do this this one here I have to say Without, without any question, it's probably my second favourite. And there's simple reasons for this. It's nothing to do with grass, but I'll tell you what it is to do with. As a young boy, I watched a certain DVD. I think, it, I think the first one was actually available in VHS, so we're going back a long time. But I watched a certain DVD about feeding the world, and it was Dylan Winter's Custom Cutters DVD. And it blew my mind. It blew my mind into oblivion <laughs> as to what actually happened out there. There was this vast area in the United States of America that big machines just travelled from the bottom right up to the top. Now in today's world, and for all our young fans, you know, maybe 20 and under, um, this seems like nothing because we've grew up with it, we've grew up with the internet, we've seen it in all these DVDs, but I can assure you I'm almost 40, well I'm 38 as we make this here. Growing up I did not know this existed. And I made myself a promise that someday I would get out to the likes of America and see this harvest happen. So Grassmen as a brand was growing. The, in behind the scenes, the shows, we were getting very popular. We were starting to ship all around the world. Our, our, our embroidery departments had doubled really in the last couple of years. And I turned around and I said, actually, we're going to America. And I think I walked in to the, the editing suite and I said, hi boys, we're, we're for America. You just need to sort visas and stuff out. And I think everybody thought I was joking and I think some time passed and I walked in again and I was like, so boys, have you used the visas sorted out? <laughs> Basically, I think pretty much is the way that went down. And it was, uh, yeah, 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 you're joking. I said, no, I'm serious, we're for America. I have it organised. We went, we did it by the book. That's the one thing that we're very, very proud of at Grassman. We do everything by the book. And I mean from music, royalties, everything like that is by the book. Same with going to America to video. My camera crew that I sent out there, there's absolutely no way I'd be taking the risk and asking guys to forfeit uh, going out there on a simple thing like an Asta. So off, a couple of guys went to the embassy, explained what it was they were doing and got their uh, visas to, to work for this wonderful company in America. Why Frederick Harveston? To be honest, at the time, I didn't know where to go. But I really wanted to do what I considered the original Feed the World Harvest, which was the Combine Trail. I understand there's so many guys cutting silage out there and it would maybe tie better in people's opinion to grass men, but I wanted to go to the original harvest, the one that blew my mind into oblivion. So I had a conversation, this goes back to Country Crest, and this is why Country Crest are at the very beginning of this DVD and at the very end of this DVD, because Thomas Murphy 
was there, spent time with these guys, and Thomas assured me that these guys would look after my staff whilst they were out there. That was important to me. He also assured me that they were good, honest, straight people. I actually try and get out every year. Do you? Yeah. Very, the, the very good friend, the, the guy that I worked for, Lance Frederick, he'd be a very good friend. Like they, himself and his two daughters and his wife were actually over for my wedding last year. And generally, if I don't get over to them, they'll get over here. And at that time, I didn't realise just how good, honest and straight they were. But So I said, that's fine. A phone call or two between Sam, who was the foreman out there, talked about what they wanted to see coming from it from their point of view and what I wanted. And very quickly realised that their want and our want was very, very similar. Fredericks wanted to basically promote the job, promote what they do, let people know that they're still open for business and want to keep people going there. What I wanted to do was try and encourage people to go out and live a little bit different because I had the opportunity to go based on that first DVD I watched, I wanted to go and I checked it out. And I made that very clear throughout the DVD. That's the message I wanted to get across. That was the message they wanted to get across we were going to be a match made in heaven. Connor and Matt went off, spent a week on their own in Cyan Wells, Colorado. Connor seen a snake. <laughs> Connor near died. <laughs> he got eaten by, I don't know how many, <laughs> how many bugs. And really, at some points in time, was painting a picture that was making me a little bit nervous because I am afraid of snakes, but we'll not get into that. They came home and the year changed a little bit weather-wise and then we had to get back out over. I had the tough choice to make if I wanted DVD production uh, and any time before Christmas to, to release to the Christmas market, we're just going to have to go to their HQ and get our interviews and stuff done because that was the way this DVD was done. So Connor and Matt had went out and spent a full week with them getting the, the picture of everything that was going on and then I was to go out to do the, the, the interviews and talk to the guys and see it. I, there was no way I was not going to see it. I think it really came down to, yeah, guys were going on Tuesday and this was maybe a Sunday. I'm pretty sure that's really and truly what happened. What do you mean, yeah, we're going to so get your bags ready? And we spent a few days with Fredericks 
at their HQ. Uh, I absolutely loved it. And it was fantastic because in hindsight, again, it was great because Lance Frederick had came sort of back home from his harvest season. He had sort of relaxed and he was able to give us the, the very best of him. We harvest and we also operate farm, F&F farms. Within the harvesting, we've been out and, and seen these in action. Can you tell us a little bit about the size and the scale of the businesses that, that you run here between the harvesting and the farm? We operate around 10 combines, depending on the year and what we're doing. Um, the harvesting has six tractors, uh, about 25 trucks. Um, we try to harvest somewhere around the 100,000 acre mark a year. But And <laughs> yeah. That's so <laughs> in seven states, so we're spread out quite a ways. You know, you just follow the harvest from the south to the north, so it gives you time uh, to do that over about a six month period, seven months, something like that. Sam was able to, to, to give us the best of him because he knew he couldn't do anything for a couple of days with the weather. It was 10 years since I first came, but I had a couple of years off in the middle. Is it an addiction or what yeah. keeps you here? Yeah, it's an addiction. I, I don't know, you always say one more year and you do one more year and then it's one more year after that. But I really enjoy it. I like the middle of America. It's quiet and the weather's normally better than it is at home, but there's, there's nothing I found at home for me that is on this scale of farm. And with this many people and this much of an operation, having new stuff all the time means you, you've got all the technology to use, which goes well in my IT, I suppose. That'd be one of your passions, I think. Yeah. Trying to be efficient and using technology to make you efficient. It's no good using technology for the sake of it. Thomas Murphy from Country Crest, with the wet weather here, was in a position to go with us, which was awesome because we just relaxed straight away. We knew he knew where he was going. And then um, Alan, Alan, who we had met back in the Bale Challenge. So from the Bale Challenge, we had met the mechanic, Alan, who has now become a part of the Grass Men family. For me, it's probably my second favourite DVD the size, the scale of the business, and it's nothing to do with grass. Isn't that amazing? And that to me sums up grass men. We've started at the start when it was all about the grass and the machines, and up now to my personal second favorite DVD, which is about the grain harvest in the middle of America, conducted by one of the most humble, straight businessmen I have ever met, which is Lance Frederick and his brother Drew don't have to run as many new trucks or is that just because the same passion's not there for the trucks? Uh, passion's pretty big for trucks. I love Kenworth trucks, but it's not the same. Trucks in our industry, they don't, they're a part of the process. They're, they're not money makers. You have to come over here and get a truck license in here, which scares Europeans to death. What's the proper name? Is it just the Eaton gearbox? Or? The Eaton Spicer. The Eaton Spicer. Is that the one that separates the men from the boys? <laughs>
favour to ask you. Can I have a go and see if I can drive one of these uh, Kenworth trucks? Oh, sure. In the gearbox? Yeah, we'll get you in there with the Kenworth truck. That's right. <laughs> That was a nice little quiet time. <laughs> How does she compare comfort? Oh, disaster. <laughs> <laughs> what well, do you think, Thomas? We sorted at it. Truck's back in one piece. <sighs> Can't that successful? Yeah, what do you think? Give me a load. Let me have it. <laughs> let me have it. Please, someone let me have it. <laughs> People have no idea. That's been an absolute lifelong ambition of mine to get behind the wheel of a Kenworth on or Peterbilt and see how I get on. So, yeah, let me have it. And it's really quite disturbing because the guys that we've now met are starting to send me pictures of them hauling the new combines back down and I actually a little bit of me in here is like crying wishing I was there doing it so maybe maybe we'll get back out the reality is I could go back out and stay out there so we've now done USA we are in a tight spot with coronavirus at the minute but watch this space guys if we can go as far in the next 10 years if we have went in the last 10 years wow I don't know what's going to happen I'm going to need someone to I don't know hold on to me Someone asked me to sum up grassmen. Well, I would sum up grassmen, or the business of grassmen like this. Imagine a massive dog, the biggest dog you can imagine, and you've grabbed a hold of his tail, and the dog's happy. <laughs> and all you are doing is holding on to this tail, and you are going from left to right to left to right. But I tell you what, there's a thrill in holding on to it. I don't expect everyone to love every DVD. I expect people to have favourites because any series that I ever watch, I have my favourites. I have ones that I could do without seeing again and ones I love to watch a second time. And that's what it's all about. And there's been a lot of work, blood, sweat and tears over the last 10 years to produce these movies or these videos. But it also goes to prove that if you love something, if you truly love something, you truly enjoy something, you can make a go of it. I mean, you know, we have a great fan base on our Facebooks, our Instagrams and our YouTubes. But the world is changing. We have to look at different types of content and how we produce content and how we put content out there. One of the things that I want to encourage you to do, particularly as this ongoing coronavirus is out there, I want to encourage you to, you know, make sure and check out our YouTube channel. Make sure and check out our Facebook page because we put an awful lot of effort into online content. And to be frank with you, we actually were the first to really start putting up regular series on our Grassman TV. What we wanted people to do was to realise and understand that we love filming agricultural dealers, manufacturers, contractors, anything to do with agriculture. And we put regular episodes up there. We're getting stronger, we're getting better. You know, as time passes by, I think lately we've been in a fantastic position. We've, we've been able to put up one uh, a video every Wednesday and every Sunday for the, the, the last good number of months. Realistically now, um, heading forward with this outbreak of coronavirus and stuff, we're, we're unsure. We're unsure of what we're going to be able to do. Some of the productions may get a little bit less quality about them if it's just myself or Gary out working doing a few things to help both our farm and friends or our trucking buddies. We have our lorries that are ready and willing and able if they're needed. And we have some tractors out there. If we have to join in and help, we will help because we are in this together and we must work together to get through this terrible ordeal of a virus. But if you are struggling, if you are at home, if you are isolating, if you are under the weather, please, please, and you're watching this, check out our online social medias or website or whatever there are oceans and oceans of footage from over the years one of the things that we are going to do and we're going to hold it for the duration of this problem we are going to reduce the price of our dvds we're going to keep them 
at approximately, I think it's half price or there, thereabouts. Don't fall out with me on the down to the pennies and the pence now, but it's been a great 10 years. There's lots more to come. No idea how it's going to change in the next 10 years, but I'm ready for it. Bring it on. There's only one thing will happen, and I make this promise. I'm going to start doing a lot more driving because I need black guy. I have too much time, and these old meetings and things doesn't do the old donkey's head any good. So you're going to see a lot more of donkey driving, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so thanks now, and we'll be in touch. And let's stay strong through this. Done America for four years, would you recommend it for anyone looking experience? Without a doubt, it's an adventure. And I've said it to the lads here with us, like, go and do it when you're young, no ties. It's what got me this job, to be honest.